would you okay would you like to uh do a roll call and i'll call the meeting to order and then you can proceed with the roll call sorry does everybody have audio right now i do i, I, I hear. do now, one second here yes yes see maybe that's better i'm sorry april um i i couldn't I sorry was okay <laughs> No, there we uh, go. I'll, that was me, not you. That was that was my speakers weren't on. Nobody was saying anything, and I didn't realize it. So. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're good to go. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order, and uh, you can start with the roll call. Okay, as far as I can tell, we have April Hashimoto, Paul Atchison, Buzz Abercrombie, here. Mike Hucklerod, Jim Fitzsimmons, and Greg Booth. I do not see Muhammad Tazim. Matt Skeletsky or John Wong. If any of you are on, please make your presence known. But we've got Jeff. It looks like we've got Jeff in uh, Matt's place. Oh, we do. I didn't see Jeff in there. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, with that, uh, and, with those and David John John Wong resigned from the board, so he won't be on the call. Yeah, we were going to, yeah, thanks, Jim. We were going to make that announcement um, here. Um, so, yes, we were we were made aware of that earlier today. So thank you. Um, and you did say Jeff Ferry is on the call? Oh, no, I was sorry. I was saying Jeff Mal Mal Mallard. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, I was on yeah. replacing um, uh, or standing Matt. in, I guess, standing in for Matt. Okay. And Jeff Ferry said uh, at the last meeting that he may not make it to this meeting. Okay. He said he would be a, online if he was going to be at all. Yeah. But with them, with the board members present, we do have a quorum. Okay. So we'll proceed with the adoption of the agenda. Does anybody have any changes to the agenda? I, I understand, Paul, that you might be making a change to the maintenance committee member recommendations item on the agenda. Did we lose him? Paul, can you hear me? Oh, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear Paul. We can't hear you at all. Trying to see if he's even there. I can he's see Paul. Yep, there he is. He's not muted, but we can't hear him. He's going to have to use sign language, apparently. <laughs> Maybe you can check your <laughs> microphone or something. We'll proceed anyway. Um, uh, my understanding was that the maintenance committee didn't have a meeting on Monday so that they aren't in a position to uh make the member recommendations so i assume that that was being removed from the agenda that can be tabled to the next board meeting there'll yeah be maintenance. hopefully there'll be a maintenance committee meeting between yes now and then. absolutely yeah this is jim i i have an item that i'd like to add uh, um i think um that would be in light of John's situation, the communications committee no longer has a chair. And I'd like to make a proposal when we get to new business about that. So I don't know if I need to add that to the agenda or just mention it when we get there. But... Okay, well, we'll just, we'll, we'll say that we're adding it. April? Would that be under new business or committee reports and voting is necessary? I've... Well, I think voting might be necessary, so you should put it wherever it belongs if we need to take a vote. So it's something regarding the chair chairing of the uh, communications committee. Well, we, we no longer have a chair. Right. John's resignation. Okay. So Are you okay? I'm gonna propose that if the board desires that I would be willing to chair that committee. That's what it's about. So oh uh, okay. Okay. Where okay. that comes in. But. Oh, okay. All right. So um, we okay. will add that to the agenda. 
I think under committee reports and voting is necessary if there's going to be a vote on that, April. Um, sure. Item what, F? Sure. Well, let's do it. Um, yeah, let's do do it as item F. Okay. Okay. With that. Do we have a motion and a second for that. Yeah, so can we make have a motion to adopt the agenda with the two revisions that we've just discussed? I move. Buzz moves. Do we have a second? Jim, Jim seconds. Jim seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Okay. Sounds unanimous. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Well, I think we have announcements first, April. Oh, sorry, to, sorry, two announcements, yeah. Not a problem. Uh, next regular meeting is scheduled, for board meeting is scheduled for February 15th uh, at 3 p.m. This one will be at the SRA Center and also via Zoom. And we'd also like to announce, as you'd heard earlier, the, uh, an, the resignation of John Wong as a director and a the chair of the um, communications committee. And we thank him for his service to the SRA during his time. Okay. And so the next item is the adoption of the consent agenda. Correct. I sent out some comments on the minutes. Um, I sent them just to, to Justine. Um, most of them were just uh, sort of typo type things. I think there was one for the vote that showed against when it, I thought it was um, in favor. Did you, did you see that, David? I did not see that okay. one. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you want so to? It's, a, it's, it's ad hoc. It's right in the middle of your screen. Motion to find an alternative way to move forward with addressing yeah. the ad hoc committee charter. Yeah. And it says eight opposed. And I think we voted in favor. So that was approved and not and not, not approved. Yeah, the eight votes were in favor. I okay. That's my recollection is that yes. the eight votes were in favor. Yeah, absolutely. That that's right. Right as well. Yes. That's what I recall. Yeah. And then there was just some like ad hoc is some spelling. Anyway, uh, it, it wasn't, it, that was the main substantial uh, comment. So we should, um, w with that, is there a motion to, uh, we should pull this item out of the consent agenda, just as a matter of, of conduct, and make those appropriate changes as April has mentioned, and have the vote the board motion to approve those those changes okay at the next meeting or at no no here right now here we, we, okay we, we, with okay so i mean i haven't circulated to everybody all the little typographical um and spelling and things like that but the, i can make a motion that we um approve the minutes with minor typographical corrections and with this correction from um, eight opposed to eight in favor for moving forward with a different initiative from the ad hoc committee uh, charter. I so, second. Okay, it sounds like Greg Booth seconded. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Is that in favor? Excellent. Anybody Aye. against? No, everyone in favor. So with the other uh, items in the consent agenda with no um, other comments or, or corrections, can that be accepted as well in the second motion? Yeah, do we have a motion to accept the rest of the items on the consent agenda? So moved. That's Buzz. Second. Oh, second. second. Was that Mike Harker Road? Looks like Mike. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, Mike. Any discussion? No. My microphone working, by the way. Oh, yeah, Call. you're back. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Any discussion? 
No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, sounds like that looks like that passed. Yes. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the update from the resort and golf club. Uh, and we've got Jeff here. Thank you for uh, being available. One of the one of the items we would have, or one of the items we've asked Jeff to address is um, that there have been a couple of communications from the golf club that have gone to members, and uh, others have seen the communications. Uh, not everybody, obviously, uh, regarding um, pickleball at the clubhouse uh, tennis courts and uh, maybe some future changes yeah. regarding the uh, restaurant, the Blue Heron. So we thought it would be a good idea for the board I'm to get up. an update straight from the resort so that we so, would have accurate yeah. information. I'm excited to uh, take my report out. You bet. So again, thank you for this opportunity. I just spoke to Matt Skaletsky and I thought he was going to be on, but he's not. I'm happy to uh, to uh, give this report. Uh, a few things have come up. One um, what had to do with uh, some of the chemicals that we use on the golf course. I'm happy to report we do not use Roundup. Um, so um, having that as, a, as an issue is not an issue for our golf course. Um, the, the chemical uh, situation is, um, you know, we're much more aware of what's coming down the pike. Um, and so our superintendent has uh, stopped the use almost exclusively. I think he said something like he has less than a, a pint of it, you know, on property, but it doesn't use it and has found a, um, an environmentally friendly uh, alternative that he's been using for a couple of years. So that's one. Um, the rumor had, had come up uh, months ago, and so I've been addressing it. It feels a little bit old news where people were concerned that we were closing down the restaurant and making it private. That I can you know, go on record as saying that is not the case. We have no, we've had no discussions of turning the, um, the Great Blue Heron private. Um, there, there's no immediate or short-term um, discussions that have been had on that. So rest assured that the restaurant will be open to the public for the foreseeable future. The indicators would be once we reach um, a maximum membership, which we still have about 90 memberships left to sell. And in a typical year, we wouldn't sell 90. So we would have to see a lot of movement in Horizon and Inverness and, and all the other developments around here uh, in order for us to get to um, capacity. Um, and then as David and I have had discussions about, once the members have a difficult time finding a seat in the Great Blue Heron, then that's when that discussion will, will come forth again. Right now, that's not the case. So uh, there'll be, um, it won't be for the foreseeable future. Uh, the other one is on pickleball. Right now, if somebody wants to, to play pickleball here on this property, they need to join the health club. Um, pickleball is available down at the health club. There are no plans for a lot of reasons to, we are resurfacing the outdoor courts, but they will not be striped as pickleball. Pickleball is a very loud sport. We know that. Um, it's You can do the research and see right away that there are lawsuits all over the, the, the country, uh, noise ordinances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have no plans to build a bubble or to put pickleball courts in or to paint lines on the outdoor courts um, for all those, those reasons. Um, it's loud. Um, it's, we just don't have the money and capital right now to put uh, forth the correct facilities. So, um, nothing in the next two years, to, to, so to speak, and no plans, no discussions for a bubble or anything like that to bring pickleball up here to the country club. So does that answer, do you think, the question sufficiently, April? Sure, it does for me. Does anybody else on the board have any questions for Jeff? And just for the record, my last name is pronounced May Lert, like the oh, month of May. Lert. Okay, you thank you. One, it looks goofy. But just think the month of May and then alert on the end, May alert. Okay. If there are any questions, 
uh, one, this meeting, or two, please come up to uh, my office. Uh, my door is almost always open Tuesday through Saturday, uh, or send an email, but I always prefer face-to-face uh, -face and getting to know people. So if you have any questions or concerns about what's going on with the golf club, I can't speak as much to the resort, that's Matt's domain, but the golf club for sure I can speak to. Anybody have any questions for Jeff? I don't, thank you. I don't see any. So thank you very much for that, Jeff. Last, yeah, last piece I would add in is um, I have sent out some information to uh, to Kathy Stoffer, who I was told that may take on like uh, some community newsletter relations and just gave her some of the things, some of the events that are going on up here at the Great Blue Heron that are open to non-members and members alike. Um, some events that we have coming are member only, but some like comedy nights, um, things of, of that nature uh, are open to uh, non-members as well. So if that's the avenue, I haven't heard back from Kathy yet, but if that's the avenue that this committee would like me to, or this board would like me to get information out to the, uh, the community, we would love to participate in that. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we'll, we'll go to the next item is members open forum. We will begin with Steve Haynes. Thank you. Um, I was very glad to see that the board sent a detailed letter uh, in response to the Inverness application. Now that the comment period is complete, I hope, I think we all hope that there will be substantive discussions between the SRA, the developer and the city to correct the many deficiencies in that application. We have three major lessons from the past that I wish the, to urge the board to avoid with this development. The first is the scar on the uplands of Semiamu left by the abandonment of the Carnoustie project after the initial clearing and infrastructure installation. The change in economic circumstances has left the cleared hillside treeless and unlandscaped for a decade and a half. And the SRA has had no means to restore the area after abandonment. We should seek some form of protection against a similar event, given the economic uncertainties of our current time. Second, Stormwater management has become an increasingly important part of SRA planning and maintenance. The SRA owns the stormwater system inside the gates. We must insist on a complete and mature stormwater management plan, ideally reviewed by experts of the SRA's choice and protection, perhaps in the form of a performance bond against improper design changes and faulty installation. And finally, we have learned that at a similar time in the development of sea smoke, the board of that time negotiated an agreement with the developer that exempted many buildings in sea smoke from a number of SRA, CCNR architectural restrictions and from paying the submittal fee. That fee covers not just the review of the plans, but the monitoring of construction, which is at least half of the work the fee is supposed to pay for. This agreement, unless modified, will end up costing the SRA well over $100,000. <laughs> the agreement appears on a document that is marked confidential, not for distribution. It appears that it was not recorded with the deed or separately with the county. While every detail of negotiations with the developer need not be disclosed, I hope that this board will pledge to the community that any proposed agreement with the developer 30 seconds with left. The community with the, an opportunity for comment and that the final agreement will be a public document. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Who's oh, next? Justine Brooks has been asked to read um, communications from two members. Go ahead, Justine. I was asked to state that Don Delaney was prepared to present information to the board in person at today's meeting, um, but is instead on planning to attend 
the February meeting. Okay. As well as, I'm looking for the other email right now. Um, Mr. Kumiati asked that I speak on his behalf about the Bell Road Railroad crossing and how the city is looking for funding on that to make a better railroad crossing there. Okay. I do not have anybody else that has indicated they wish to speak. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I do have two more. Um, Anne House. Okay. Hi, everyone. Anne House here. Um, I had a question. It's kind of a question and a comment at the same time and maybe a concern. Um, so we live off of Snowy Owl in St. Andrews Green. And at the bottom of the street where there's the path, there's a considerable amount of waste that people have left from their yards. People seem to feel entitled to drag yard waste into this area. And the other day while on my walk, I noticed one of the maintenance crews crew on the golf course was dumping um, grass clippings and some um, branches. And I was just wondering if this is um, allowable. To me, it seems like a solid waste issue um, and it's really unsightly. If you've walked down this area, you can see it's just piled up. Um, there's a tremendous amount of waste um, and I think it looks terrible. And the conditions are making it worse when we have storms because it's made, it's, it never dries out. And so it's causing, you know, branch accumulation. It's causing um, the trunks of these trees to remain soggy. They snap off. They stay in place. And I just, I'm, I'm just concerned that it's become this open, um, open area where people feel uh, entitled to dump their lawn clippings and and whatnot. And so I'd like the board to do something about this. Um, I have mentioned it before. David, you responded to my email. Thank you. That was quite a bit ago. And I have not seen the offending neighbor <laughs> go back since that time. Um, I have, but I, they are also out of town. So I imagine that's probably why. Um, but when I see mention of it in emails, it's usually embedded in like a one line sentence within the newsletter. So I'm requesting that it be sent out more widespread so that people will actually read it and know that it is illegal to dump um, yard clippings and to leave solid waste out there like that. Thank you. So are you talking about at the very end of Snowy Owl where it, um, where there's a little split rail fence? Is that yes. what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, both to the left and to the right of that, um, mostly to the left um, as you're walking back on the, you know, towards the, the greens. You can see it all along there and there's usually fresh whatever you know whatever the lawn disposal of the day is okay we'll take a look and see that almost sounds like it's city right of way which you shouldn't be dumping anything anywhere anyway but it's always good to try to figure out who, where who does the the property belong to who has responsibility to it so um I will have uh, maybe Dan and I'll take a look at that. And thanks for bringing it to our attention. And that you said the golf course was actually also dumping there too. Okay, so yeah, we'll have was, a conversation with Jeff as well. Yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, it was one of the big cutters. Um, you know, one of the I have no idea what they're called, like the but the people that ride them. around on them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll take a look at it and we'll find out who the property belongs to and who's who's doing the dumping and uh, we'll, we'll we'll make sure that that gets taken care of because that doesn't sound right to me. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Okay, Jennifer Plombon. Hi. Uh this is for Jeff Maylert. I hope I said it right. Um Jeff, I just wanted to thank you for letting us know that you're decreasing the use of Roundup and I will make sure to pass that good news on to the environmental committee. So thank you. Welcome. Okay, is that anything else, Jennifer? 
and nobody else has indicated they wish to speak. Okay, so we'll move on to committee reports and voting as necessary. The first item we have is the communications committee charter revisions. Do we have a motion to approve so that we can discuss? I'll make the motion. Okay, Paul's made the motion. A second. Do we have a second? Jim, I'll second. Okay, Jim is seconded. Okay, discussion. Um, I can start. I I read through the communications committee charter revisions when they came out with the board packet. I have a number of comments. I I wasn't able to embed my comments into the PDF, so I asked for a um, Word document last night, and I've uh, made, I've started to, to make comments, but I haven't had time to complete them all and circulate them. Um, but there's a number of changes here that uh, I think need to be uh, discussed in more detail, um, such as changing the term of the committee into an indefinite term, um, referring to SRA bylaws for removal of members when I couldn't find anything in the SRA bylaws about removal of committee members. Um, and the, you know, a, sort of a, a total rewrite of the objectives and responsibilities. So that's, that's my preference would be to uh, accumulate some comments from the group before uh, there's an approval, but I will um, let everybody else chime in on their thoughts. Yeah, I, I personally like a little bit more time to kind of grind through it and make sure I understand what the implications are of the changes. It would be good maybe for everybody to consult if we could consolidate all of our comments somehow so that there's not um, uh, so there's as little overlap and duplication as possible. Does anybody else have anything, any comments on the communications proposed new communications committee charter? I don't know whether whether you could hear me because of my uh... My internet connection is kind of a little dicey. Uh, I would like a little bit more time to be able to read yeah. through it and digest what the changes are. Yeah, yeah, we could hear you. I agree with Buzz to do it between now and the next meeting. And what about you, Jim? I mean, you're volunteering to be the next chair. Are you? Were you involved with these changes? Are you? Did you help work on them? No, I've had no interaction whatsoever with the communications committee or any of the work that they've done. I just okay. became aware that they no longer have a chair. Right. I'm not involved in any committee and I felt that I ought to do my part. Sure. Do something. So that's where I'm coming from. I've never, I never saw this before you did. So, okay. So would you like more to, would you agree that there's probably um, uh, more time that has to, another step here that has to happen because you're gonna be chairing this. Well, I mean, when I read it, I, if there are some mistakes in there, like referring to bylaws when, you're, when it shouldn't be or something, I didn't, I didn't catch that. But when I read, read the gist of it, I had no concerns with what I read. So, yeah. but I just read it through once, just like many of you. So I haven't studied it. Uh, okay. But I don't have any negative reaction to it, uh, other than if there are, you know, factual or procedural things that are wrong in here that need to be corrected, other than that. Right. Okay. So um, I have I have some comments and questions to to send to somebody. I I assume that later on in the meeting, the somebody would be you, Jim. Maybe um, unless there's somebody else that wants, you know, I'm, I'm not married to this. If there's another board member that would really like to 
chair of this committee, that's fine. I, okay. you know, I'm just trying to offer my yeah, services sure. if they're needed. Sure. Okay. Uh, anybody else on the board have any comments on the communications committee charter proposed changes? not on the board april but i did want to mention one thing as far as a process and that might be i could try to set this document up in a shared drive so you could all comment on it in a, for a single shared document if that would be of any help to the board instead of trying to send your everyone's individual comments back and forth and trying to reconcile that well it sounds like i have the most sort of um ready to circulate comments so i could i could uh, start i could be the person who starts and then um uh we can see how many it sounds like buzz myself uh have some well it sounds like i have some comments buzz needs more time and uh i didn't hear too many other uh opinions on the charter we don't have muhammad i got a note from muhammad he's having trouble connecting so we don't have muhammad we don't know what his situation is so i'll i'll propose that i would start with the first round of comments just to get the conversation started and point out uh some things that need to be addressed and then probably everybody can respond to that draft the shared the shared thing i don't know if everybody can everybody access the shared drive if they don't have microsoft 365 that's something we can we need to experiment with yeah I'm yeah so maybe, sure. yeah so maybe we won't maybe it's not a good idea to experiment with this document so that the committee can get going but um so i'll start by circulating mine to the board and staff and then sort of in parallel with that, we can figure out about how to operate the shared drive thing. Okay. So I'll make a motion that the committee charter revisions as um, circulated are not approved, but that a period of and a process to comment will start right away so that it can be um, brought back to the board at the February meeting. I second. Greg seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And I did see uh, Muhammad was on. Muhammad, oh, good to hear from you. Approve or disapprove? Are you there, Muhammad? Mm. I think we might have to just say abstained on that one. Okay. Okay. Okay, the next one is the Architectural Standards Committee Charter Revisions. Um, I attended the Architectural Standards Committee um, meeting and um, if, yeah, if we can just keep going. So the, the changes to the Architectural Standards Committee charter are, um, I think, is there a red line? Yeah, there is. I'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's what they were there's, there's not a lot of them. So um, you can see, I think everybody should have read this. It's just uh, being clear, clar clarifying um, who can vote and who can't vote. And if the chair, um, who has to be resident and not resident. Um, so this is just clarification since uh, John Gordon has stepped in as the acting, as the chair. Uh, of the um, Architectural Standards Committee. Uh, anything, can you keep scrolling down, David? Yeah. Oh, okay, and they they want their schedule to be uh, more uh, just to, that they meet when they need to meet uh, without it being so prescribed. Mm -hmm. 
and then also not in closed session that was struck yeah yeah and they struck out not in closed session yeah And then this is that they have updated their uh, objectives and deliverables for 2023. So um, they're, they were going to do uh, a, a lot more work on um, the drainage system. That's the big item that they've added. Um, and uh, get a lot more documentation together on um, the drainage system uh, around Semiamu and uh, look at procedures for connecting to, to that system uh, if you're a new construction in Semiamu. I think that was it. Okay. There was one little one here just about power. Oh, yeah, just correct. Just cor I think that's just correcting executive director. It's just a, uh, being consistent with the title in all in all the um, uh, documents. So uh, I'll make a motion to accept the architectural standards committee charter revisions. Can I get a second? Second, general, general second. Jim is seconding. Any any more discussion about those changes? Or questions? Okay. All those in favor of accepting the uh, the revisions as presented? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, sounds like that passes. Architectural Standards Committee uh, member recommendations. So we have um, members that um, currently serve on the um, Architectural Standards Committee or have, have been serving. And this is to uh, ex uh, extend their terms for one year. Uh, the Architectural Standards Committee is proposing that they extend their um, terms for one year instead of the uh, usual two years in order to get their staggering of terms um, uh, accomplished because there were so many appointments that happened effective January 1st, 2023. Um, I thought there was a third name, but there's only two that appear on this resolution. David, is were you did, were you only given two names? I was only aware of Guy Kelly and Larry Kyle, um, okay. but something, Justine, any inf more information if someone else was supposed to be added to this resolution? I was only given the two names as well. Okay. There were, there were three names that were submitted for the maintenance committee, but that may be okay. that name. Yeah. Okay. Steve, were you aware, Steve Haynes, were you aware of anybody else that was yes, to be added? the board needs to appoint a member. Yeah, the board needs to appoint a member, but I thought that there would were be three. The Oh, okay, but I thought there was a, a third person. Okay, so this resolution is to uh, approve the addition of those two individuals. Okay. I will make the motion to approve Guy Kelly and Larry Kyle as uh, members of the Architectural Standards Committee for one year term, each for one year term starting on January 1st, 2023. Anybody second? I'll second. Sounds like Greg is seconding. Any discussion or questions about Guy or Larry? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I hope I'm not stepping out of line, but I I did not second that motion. Somebody else did. Oh, uh, so I think it may have been Buzz. Oh, it was sorry. Buzz. Okay, okay, sorry. Thanks, Greg. Okay, and we do need um, a board member to uh, volunteer to be the the board representative on the ASC committee, as well as 
as a board member to um, volunteer to be the chair of the communications committee. So we actually have two um, committees that need a board representative or a board member to join. So if anybody would like to, uh, to volunteer to be chair of the a or not, sorry, if anyone would like to volunteer who is a board member on to volunteer on a committee, if they could let me know um, the ASC committee and the communications committee, it sounds like Jim's put his hand up for communications, uh, let me know because we need to take care of that for ASC. This is Jim, just, just added to that discussion. Yep. We're also going to need to appoint, uh, appoint a replacement board member for John so that's a possible candidate right. for a committee as well. Right. And, and along those lines, I've, this probably isn't the time, but at some point during this meeting, I'd like to have the board discuss what our plan is to replace John on the board. Yeah, and we can, we can uh, maybe discuss that under new business, but there is a fairly prescriptive um, procedure set out in the bylaws right. and the- Right, I mean, I was, that's how I, got on board so I'm aware of that I'm just yeah what would be suggesting that we get we jump on that right away yeah sure okay um so next the next time is maintenance committee member recommendations uh I think we've agreed that we don't have those member recommendations ready for this um this meeting but maybe Paul you can give us uh, a little bit of information on where the maintenance committee is. Certainly. Um, we did get off to a fast start and in doing so we kind of stumbled over each other and I would like to take total acceptance for that uh, kind of the false start. So following up on that, I'm going to be again getting in touch with everybody in the next couple of days after this call and uh, we will go from there and I'm feeling extremely strong in terms of some of the candidates that we do have and look forward to meeting everybody that has put forward an application. So I will be doing that as soon as possible before the weekend. And we'd like to get, uh, we'd like to be able to start talking about uh, the, being able to RFP uh, some contracts at the next board meeting. Yes. Paul, this is Jim. Are you are you chair of the? I'm sorry, I should know this, but are you chair of the maintenance committee? Yes, I am. Can, can you explain again why, when we had in these documents a motion to add these new individuals to the committee, we're not following through with that? What what is the reason? The reason is that I have we we basically have gotten a fast start on this and we were kind of with uh, with the, I, I just don't wanna get, get into names at this point, but I have, again, very pleased with what's going to happen. I just have not made the contact at this point and I expect to do so in the next couple of days. So Jim, I, I think what happened was um, the, there was an intention to have a maintenance committee meeting and the new members of the maintenance committee would have been discussed at that maintenance committee meeting on Monday. And then the maintenance committee uh, would have agreed on, you know, the members being put forward and Paul as the chair would have brought those names forward at this meeting today on Wednesday. But that process didn't happen. Right. So we made the decision that, that because that, that that meeting should take place with the maintenance committee. We really need to coalesce around the core of what we are doing, get that identified, and then certainly be able to fit in the components of the people and the resources that they have to be able to make it an extremely good committee. Okay, so the plan is to have those meetings and then bring new member recommendations to the next yes. board meeting? Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Thank the you. Maintenance Maintenance meeting didn't have actually hold a meeting. Yeah. 
So yes. that, was, that was sort of the issue. Okay, thank you. Okay. So any other questions on maintenance? Anybody have anything else they want to talk about with maintenance? Thank you. Okay, so there's no vote there. The next item is the proposal from the Environmental Committee on um, this uh, the ban of glyphosate. Uh, I think Jeff was going to present it, and my and Jeff's not here. My um, my understanding we've got the form of the uh, the um, resolution in the package. So my recollection is that this was presented at a, or discussed at a board meeting in, um, I think it was September, September, October. Uh, at the time there was some discussion about it. My recollection was that there was a, and this was just an observer, obviously I wasn't on the board, uh, was that there was a discussion about um, getting a legal uh, opinion on enforceability of this ban within SRA, uh, given that it was not banned by the state or the county or the federal authorities. My understanding is that that legal opinion was never actually, um, nobody actually called and got that legal opinion. Uh, I think David said he no, he was never uh, instructed to get that opinion. So uh, that nobody has nobody has uh, talked to a lawyer about it. Um, so I so I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll make a motion to uh, approve the resolution and second it, and then we'll be able to have more discussion. Does anybody want to make the motion? To, for the to to ban the glyphosate. This is Jim. I'll make that motion. Okay, Jim's made the motion. Anyone willing to second? Okay, I'll second. So, uh, we'll we'll have. I'll I'll start the discussion. Um, I personally am, you know, against uh, using these types of chemicals, uh, in which, you know, I, I use the trade name Roundup when I describe them, but uh, I personally am against using them. I, I think they're bad for the environment uh, and uh, bad for people, bad for, for children and pets, um, sort of bad all around, toxic. Um, my concern with the resolution is enforcement. And I, I, it concerns me how SRA would enforce uh, like a fine or uh, some kind of a, a, an action against somebody for using Roundup. So for example, if I think I, if I look over and I'm sure my neighbor is spraying Roundup on their they're in the gravel in their landscaping. And I call SRA to report them. I think it's gonna be very difficult to prove that they were using Roundup. And, you know, they're gonna say they weren't. Um, we, we're not gonna go in and search their garage or do chemical testing on their, their landscaping. So, you know, for me, it's an enforcement issue. I, I'm in favor of educating people and strongly discouraging the use, but I, and I'm against the use of it, but I, I don't see how we're going to enforce it. If we're going to be fining people for using it, I have trouble imagining how that's going to, to um, be done by SRA staff. So that's, that's my point of view. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Yeah, maybe I can I can add. Uh, you know, a lot of what you said, I totally agree with. I think it is a good idea not to use 
uh, glyphosates. Um, I think the SRA would be well advised to recommend to the members or to request of the members that they don't use it. Uh, I think education is a very good thing, but in my view, uh, an outright ban on it, especially one enforced with substantial fines, is an overreach that I cannot uh, support. Uh, I also share uh, the impracticality of, uh, of enforcing this particular ban. So my preference would be that we, uh, we start on a program of education, of requesting, but not trying to, uh, not trying to ban something. Uh, let me leave it at that. This is Jim. I have two comments. One, I was part of the board that uh, considered this proposal back in whatever it was, September, October. And I can say that the entire board enthusiastically supported the ban. So I want to go on record with that. Uh, number two, Jeff's not here to speak, but there are members, I believe, of the committee on the call. I don't know if it's, in, there was a question raised about legal opinions. I don't know if it's appropriate, but could we hear from a member of the, I believe Jennifer is on the committee and I believe she's on the call. I don't know. If if our rules allow someone to speak, but if so, maybe we might um, take a moment and hear from a member of the committee that worked on this initiative. Well, maybe before we do that, we can just hear from the rest of the board members. Um, is uh, is um, Mike? Yeah. Um, I would, uh, I can't remember. How I voted last fall on this, but um, I, enforcement of such a ban, I think, is impossible. Um, so I would um, be more in line with what Buzz um, was saying about uh, this whole thing. So that's my opinion. Um, um, Mohammed, can can you can we hear you? Mohammed, can you try speaking and no, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Sorry. Um, Greg? I just wanted to add that uh, the ban or the, the, the enforcement would also have to include uh, quite a slew of landscaping companies <laughs> that do a lot of the service work in the community. And mm -hmm. how are we going to impose rules on these various uh, service providers. An additional hurdle that we'd have to overcome. Yeah, I think the I think that that was discussed at the board meeting last fall, where the it was pointed out that whatever a landscape service provider does is um, the homeowner is would be held responsible for the activities carried out at their direction on their property. But um, so, I, so I recall that discussion happening then. Paul? I would agree with the education and also the fact that we can not really have uh, any, I, I mean, I agree with the educational side totally, but I also agree with Buzz and Greg. Thank you. Um, Did you hear me? Yes, okay, I heard sorry. you. Um, Mohammed, do you want to put something into um, the chat? Can you put something into the chat to just let us know what you're thinking? And um, We'll give Mohammed a minute.
Did Muhammad lift his hand at all or not? Or yeah, no, okay. Muhammad is typing. Ah. I mean, I think everybody is of the opinion that, you know, Roundup is, is a bad product and that it's got a very negative impact on the environment. It's just a matter of the role that SRA is going to play. I mean, I would I would say that, you know, uh, uh, if there obviously if there's a ban in the city of Blaine or a ban in Whatcom County, we would comply with that ban. And we would and Whatcom County and city of Blaine would be enforcing it. But um, it's, I have a hard time uh, trying to figure out how our staff is going to go out and enforce um, something that's very hard to prove. April, can you see Mohammed's message? Oh. Okay, yes, so I can, I had to scroll down. Okay, so um, Jennifer, is it, we can give you a couple of minutes to, if you would like to say something on this. I know you're the person who's been championing it. Okay, um, first of all, <clears throat> as far as whether or not we can legally do this, I did a very extensive search and made several phone calls to state of Washington offices. There does not exist as far as I could find or they could find anything that says we cannot ban this chemical within the gates of Sammy Allen. So if the board wanted to consider the ban and ask our lawyer if it can be done, fine. But as far as I know, it can be. It's banned all over the country in cities, counties, states, you know, neighborhoods. So I do believe that legally this ban could be passed. Um, the intent was always that with a ban, we would then have some sort of force behind saying to people and to landscape companies, you can't use this. There, whether or not there's a fine, how the fine would be, you know, structured, how this would be reported is something that the governance committee would then have to deal with. And I don't think our intent was ever that we were going to have people wandering the neighborhood and asking people what they were using, but that if somebody was spraying something and we had a ban passed, at the very least we could say, oh, what are you spraying? Did you know that this particular chemical is banned here? Because right now with simply an education promotion, we know people rarely read anything that's sent out via email anyhow. So without any sort of teeth behind this, it would be pretty hard, I think, to try to encourage people not to use glyphosate. What we had intended to do with the landscape companies, if the ban passed, was to send a letter to all of them saying, it has been banned in this neighborhood. And if you continue to use it, there will be repercussions. The repercussions to be set by the governance committee, of course. But if the landscape companies themselves know they can't use it, and that there might be a problem with using it, I would think that would stop a lot of the use and take it away from having to be the, the responsibility of the homeowner. So I guess that's all I can say to, you know, to answer your questions. Um, like Jim said, it was pretty enthusiastically endorsed by the former board, but, um, Okay, no, this board. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Anybody else on the board have anything else they want to say uh, before we vote? Uh, one, one question. Uh, I, I realize that uh, this is not open forum, but George Hargenrader uh, would like to speak and he just put out in a, a chat 
Uh, I think in, in view of, the, of this subject, it might be worthwhile to make an exception. Uh, you mean in terms of letting George speak? Let it, letting him speak? I don't know what he's going to say, but that's for him to say. Well, okay, well, is George, are you there? I mean, normally we don't, normally we don't have, uh, uh, normally the board meeting is only for board members to speak. Um, I, I, we made an I exception. Understand, but, yeah, we made an we exception. Yeah, we basically just made an exception to begin yeah. with. So yeah, but, I mean, I, was, but but we I made the did exception. because the I made the exception chair based is on, not on the call. Yeah, so I, I we heard from yeah. a committee member. This yeah. is very different. Yeah, I I think that we <laughs> made an exception. We don't want to get into we don't want to get into regularly having people um, speak from the community throughout the board meeting. I I, I agree with Jim that Jennifer um maybe with speaking in jeff ferry's place uh for today but um and i think everybody can read what george has put up on um in in the chat so if there's anything else is there anybody else who has anything to say before we vote okay so the motion on the table is to uh is to approve the the ban of glyphosate all those in favor of the ban. This is Jim, I'm in favor. Jim's in favor. All those opposed? Has somebody tallied it up? I can't, we can't hear you, David. I don't know if you're talking to yourself or talking to us, but. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I see April, Buzz, Mike, um, Oppose, that's three. Um, so uh, Greg Booth, that's four. Paul, that's five. Muhammad, four or against? He's against. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Against. So it looks like all the board members and attendants are against uh, other than um, well, we have Matt Skaletsky. Matt, do you have a vote either to approve or not to approve this motion in favor of a ban on uh, glyphosate? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll approve. I, so the invite says four o'clock. Oh, sorry. So I, so I missed, I guess, well, however long you've been on. Uh, since three, yeah, I well, I sent you an email earlier today saying it was at three. I don't know what the invite. I didn't. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll work that out, Matt. Sorry about that. Okay. So it sounded like we had two in favor and the rest of the board against. I think the motion um, does not pass. Okay. Then we added on to the uh, agenda a um, volunteer for to chair the communications committee. And Jim volunteered. Does anybody else want to volunteer to chair the communications committee? So um, thank you to Jim for volunteering to do that. Um, I'll make a motion that uh, Jim be the chair of the communications committee effective immediately. Can we get a second? I'll second. Any more discussion? Any questions? I can't. I don't hear anything. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jim. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Here's unanimous. It sounds unanimous. Congratulations, Jim, and thank you. Uh, next item is financial reports. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, I'll turn that over to David. Okay. Uh, these are preliminary unaudited reports for the prior fiscal year, full 12 months of 2022. Um, I'm sure hopefully everybody's had a chance to take a look at these. Um, you can see there's um, many items that are over budget. There's many items that are under budget. Um, you can go through and parse these if you like. Um, I think the overall um, message would be to the membership that we finished, I think, um, uh, better than what was originally budgeted um, as far as net income is concerned. So our income exceeded our expenses. You can see some of this um, uh, in the uh, profit and loss, giving you some broader, um, you know, aggregate totals for what, um, you know, roll up into these line items. Uh, a couple things to really stand out is we were um, well under what we had uh, predicted for income. Um, I think Steve Haynes pointed this out. We did maybe we didn't have as many homes as predicted, but much of that activity that we did have was in sea smoke, and the SRA does not receive income for um, previously um, uh, uh, approved models of homes. So it's a different process that was agreed to. And so even though we did have the associated expenses, we didn't have the um, the income. You may have seen in my manager's report also that transfer fees. Um, in 2021, we had 122 homes sold, and this year we had 60. So uh, we did not hit that $24,000 mark. Um, I still think 60 home sales is a pretty robust year. Um, and sort of average for uh, Semiyama over the last um, 10, 10 years or so from what I was looking at. So um, big takeaway there is our income was much lower than what we had predicted. Um, and similarly, uh, you can see we had a number of items that were under budget um, for various reasons um, throughout both um, our um, uh, administration and maintenance. Um, one of the big uh, line items that sticks out to me is just um, under security here. That's $19,000 over budget. That was almost all uh, gates. We had a lot of repairs, a lot of service calls on gates this year. Many of you probably recognize that. And I think it's uh, really a telltale sign that these gates have really sort of come to the end of their useful life and be one of the first things that the maintenance committee is probably going to be really taking a good hard look at, um, not throwing good money after bad, but um, taking a look at uh, investing in, in these gates so we don't have these, um, using our, our capital um, expenditures and our restricted reserve to reduce our operating costs like, like this. Um, so um, I think also in our, that's, basically high level on the uh, um, operating side. Um, and then on the uh, capital side, you see we um, originally uh, budgeted $169,000 in expenditures. There were a couple of um, unbudgeted items that were um, that we did last year, uh, $34,000 in pavement and 12,000 in concrete curbs. Uh, over uh, budget too on things like um, Stormwater drainage facility that was unbudgeted. Much of that had to do with with Boundary Ridge. Um, we've had um, uh, some uh, work done by I and I um, Pipe Service. We've had um, they were out I think at SRA in this year's budget uh, doing some catchment cleaning, and many of the uh, catchments um, are are in need of being vacked with the big vacuum uh, truck that comes by. Uh, we've had some areas scoped. So, you know, everyone's aware of the uh, uh, stormwater issues we've had. And we're trying to make sure that we're staying on top of the maintenance of our stormwater system. So, um, and I guess we'll go back to the very top, um, opening up uh, with the balance sheet. There's quite a few adjustments that still need to be made here. Depreciation for 2022 needs to be booked. We have some year-end accruals that haven't been booked yet. So this will change um, uh, once we get the finance committee together. Uh, we get some um, audited financial statements, and you'll see some of these reports uh, uh, change in, in some, some ways. Um, I, I think as far as the profit and loss is concerned, probably not in a real material way, but um, that remains to be seen. So I know we still have invoices to book. It's still early in, in this month to be putting these reports together. I put this together last week. So 
uh, sometimes we we don't have everything coming in, um, you know, by the time I can put this report together. So any questions? Well, looking forward to the Finance Committee getting together and taking a look at how we build these reports and providing, um, you know, the information to the membership and to the board in a timely fashion and uh, in a meaningful way as well, so that these reports um, are answering the questions uh, management has and the board has. And December is really the only month where there is a more um, disciplined effort that goes into accruals, uh, whereas I think for the other months we we close the month and uh, generate the reports. December is the only month where, because of the, the audit, we keep the period open a, a little bit longer just to catch any late invoices that come in, which is why these are preliminary. Any questions for David on the uh, preliminary December financial reports? No, okay. Next item on the agenda under old business and voting as necessary was an ad hoc committee update. And I had a meeting set with um, some of the people who were um, driving the ad hoc committee uh, initiative, I had a meeting set with them last weekend and one of them got COVID. And then we set a meeting for this, we moved it to this Friday day after tomorrow and the person is still testing positive. So it looks like we won't meet um, on Friday as either. We're just gonna now wait until the person's completely better and, and has tested negative a couple of days in a row. So that meeting has been put off. Um, obviously, there's a um, an overlap between the ad hoc committee initiative and the work that was done on 501 and 502 in 2022. And there's, you know, so I'm going to meet with that group of people once um, everybody's healthy, and hopefully, it's it's in the next week or so because. Um, the person said, I expect the person who has COVID will be better um, in the next week. And, um, and then I'll bring back a, a um, uh, summary of, of how that discussion went um, to, at the next board meeting and, and explain, uh, and I'll also explain to that group that the big reason that their charter was not approved at the last board meeting was just the scope was too large and um, the, the current board felt that it was just too much to tackle in a six month period. So I, I will have to defer um, an update to the next meeting just because of health reasons of the participants. Does anybody have any other questions or comments about the ad hoc committee? No? April, this is Jim. Yeah. Could you just tell us who you will be meeting with when that meeting does take place? Sure, so I've told them to just sort of get, I, I talked to Jane and I talked to um, John and I told them to put together you know, whoever they wanted to uh, include. But Jane and Jane was the champion of that um, charter up to December. And I think John has volunteered to um, help out, help, help move the process forward. John who? Halen. Okay, thank you. And obviously without Jane, there's, you know, there's not quite the same momentum behind the, the um, initiative, but we're going to sit down and see if there's something that we can advance, you know, some component or one or more components of, of, of what was in that charter. Uh, okay, so uh, any other new business? I, I don't believe we added anything to the agenda when we approved it. So we go into executive session. Uh, you, you have some more. I, oh. 
I just had a, a comment. I hope I'm not out of order with this, uh, but I would like to go back to the glyphosate uh, issue. And I, I would hate to see that die. Right. Um, and I'm wondering if we could uh, continue discussions and, and possibly take a two-step process, whereas we take the education, communication, blanket the community with the desire that this not be used, sure. and then possibly go to a ban if we find that we're being ignored. But I'd like to, to yeah. I wouldn't like, I wouldn't want this, 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 this to, to die. die. Yeah, I uh, know, no. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody, um, I don't think anybody expressed that it wasn't a, um, a, a positive uh, initiative for, it was just whether it was going to be something that people were going to be punished for. I think that was that was where Correct. the catch was for for most Correct. people. So Correct. yeah, yes. I think that if we if if the communications committee or um, it probably makes the most sense wants to start off with um, uh, a, a, a communications strategy, education strategy um, campaign of some sort, camp, yeah. yeah yeah that the board would absolutely support that and uh and you know if if it becomes if it becomes uh something that we just see that we need to do more about we're not uh, opposed to keeping the dialogue open now i i, I do have Excellent. a question though shouldn't shouldn't there also be a role there for uh, for Mohammed and the uh, environmental committee. Oh, that's right. That's true. Uh, the, the, that's two, true. the two of them really have a stake yeah. in this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Environmental committee um, is behind the initiative and then the communications committee is gonna help with the, um, the, the messaging. So, I don't think anybody disagrees with with the fact that that uh, discouraging people from using those those chemicals is uh, something we are all behind. Okay, thanks. Okay, can we go into executive session? I'll I'll move to ex to go into executive session. And for those of you who are joining us or not. Uh, familiar with board meetings and proceedings, executive session will just be a, um, the board and staff will uh, be going into a breakout room. Uh, we'll be discussing matters that are allowed to be discussed by the RCWs in executive session, and then we'll reconvene and any actions taken, then we will ratify those actions in, in uh, regular session. So you will see uh, uh, the board and myself disappear for a little while. We will be coming back. So Lori, let us know if you have that breakout. Yeah, I, I was didn't know if you guys needed to then vote on Buzz's motion and all agree that okay. Oh, okay. Do we, do we have to make a motion to go into executive session? Well, I believe so. Pardon? You believe so? I believe so, yes. Okay, I second, I'll second, I'll second Buzz's motion. Will those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody Aye. opposed? Anybody opposed? Okay, off we go to executive session. Uh, Laurie, I didn't, know that. didn't realize it took that much time. Okay, for those of you that stayed uh, on, we appreciate that. The board uh, discussed matters in an executive session. They took no action, so no actions to ratify in regular session. Okay. Uh, with that, I think that brings us to item number 13. I'm I move I move to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Buzz. Second from Buzz. All in favor? Aye. Steve, I need to talk to you. I'll 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 send you an email, Steve Haynes. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You Thank you. Bye -bye. Feel better. Hope you get better, David. Oh yeah, I'm I'm on the road. I'm on the okay. road. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye now.